Thank you. Thank you for being here. It's a great turnout, and I really appreciate it. We really appreciate it. Uh, we think this is a big deal, and uh, it's going to take time to, to prove itself, but we're excited about it. But first, I'd like to make some introductions so everybody knows who is who. I'm Mayor uh, Tony Kenner. Uh, Sandy Brandon is our one of our rec center managers, directors. Ms. Norma Lynch, our new school board representative. Superintendent. Yes. Superintendent Eddie Tyler. And uh, Eddie feels like this is a very special program and he wants us, he wanted to be here and hear about it, be a part of it. Who did you bring with you? Uh, I have my assistant superintendent, Hope Zena. Hope is over uh, development, uh, you name it, uh, she does. And I think Principal Moss is here as well. So thank you. Yeah. With the news of uh, a grade A school, right? Yes, sir. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Nothing yeah. else. Yes. Uh, Don Roberts, who is going to be our coordinator for theater, arts, performing, visual. Uh, <laughs> Jonathan Langston, who is going to be our program director. <laughs> I don't remember what I had for breakfast this morning. Uh, Sunshine, everybody knows Sunshine, right? Sunshine, Camp Sunshine, our hero. Uh, Miss Annette Mitchell, uh, one of our councilmen who's working very closely with our team. Miss Laura, our rec department director, I think everybody knows her. Jerry Johnson's here somewhere. Jerry's working closely with us uh, as the other council member. So, what I'd like to do is go through this PowerPoint real quick. Uh, I don't want to pontificate too long. I prefer to answer questions and have a discussion. So I'll move as quickly as I can. Uh, please, y'all come on in. You're not going to disturb us. Just grab a seat. The Baptist got all the back row taken up. So. Expect excellence. Academics, arts, athletics. So our new after school programs. Right now we're doing really unbelievable numbers in our 10, 11, and 12 year olds after school. Averaging 52 to 7, averaging 52, high 72 uh, kids every day. 4,000 plus contacts at, uh, up to this point. Um, we've already equaled what we did last year and surpassed it. The purpose of this program is to build young men and women of character with discipline and a strong work ethic to ensure success in their chosen path in life. Can't emphasize that enough. The program. There's three facets to facilitate the success of our students. It's going to be academics, the arts, and athletics. Plan. This is a quote from uh, George Patton that I couldn't find because I didn't take the time to find it, but I paraphrased. A good plan is cleaned up, I promise, a lot from what George Patton had to say. <laughs> a good plan executed today, executed today is far better than a perfect plan with the greatest of intentions. The point of this is we have a good plan, but not a perfect plan, not a complete plan, but I'm ready to go. We're ready to go, and we feel, let's get started. The path may not see, uh, be set, but the end result is certain. And we know what the end result is. Young men and women of character, academic scholars, uh, kids who uh, excel in the arts and in athletics. Implementation will essentially be daily. We're trying to figure it out. We're going to evaluate every day and we'll be, be very flexible with how we run this program. It's going to be ever evolving. It's going to be open to suggestion and constructive criticism. Please be patient as we figure this out and we hope for the kids learning and participating is going to be a lot of fun. The academic side. We're going to have tutoring, high-Q study groups, essay group, uh, workshops, resume building, interview workshops, computer skills, young entrepreneurs group, clubs, math, history, science, robotics, chess, debate, just examples of anything we can have, want to have. We're going to concentrate on test preparation and helping kids find scholarships in, in teamwork or as a team member with the high school at that point in time. The art side, which is my specialty, which I know so much about. <laughs> Theater, vocal, musical instruments, piano and guitar. And 
we really took the time to look up the connection between music and enhanced math skills, enhanced ability to uh, learn a second language, and the research is amazing. And we've got actually some references here and some uh, literature if anybody's interested in tying those two and see how they connect. We have ballet and dance going on now. Uh, we're going to get into the visual arts, whether it be uh, painting classes, pottery, whatever. That may, some of it may be done at the art center, but we hope to have a singular camp, campus where every kid will be able to do everything. One-stop shop so parents will know they'll come over after school and you pick them up in one place when they finish. Culinary arts has been a huge, huge hit. Uh, we have waiting lists to get into Jonathan and his wife, uh, Jessica's uh, culinary uh, arts classes creative writing workshops, theater, technical training, sound, lighting, videography, set design, costuming, play. We did this at 3.30, 4 o'clock this afternoon. All right, Martin, here's what I want you to do. I want you to show me a mad face. Now show me a madder face. Now show me a curious face. Now I want you to say this. It's a dog night, my dear. It's a dog night, my dear. But we've got to do what we've got to do. We've got to do what we've got to do. She don't get it. Okay, look, here's what I want you to do. I want you to do everything that I do. I do here. It's a dog night, my dear. It's a dog night, my dear. Look me. Look really. <laughs> <laughs> exposure to in other places. So from that, there's the acting classes, vocal, but kids running the cameras, the sound, the video. We have the event center we want to expose kids to the soundboard. I mean, the, the list goes on and on. And I thought that would just be a great example. And thank you, Don, and Abby, uh, Carolyn Grimes, and Larkin uh, West for, for doing that for us. We also want to form a group formation of uh, performing arts boosters, which would be like Athletic Booster Club, uh, would be like our uh, Friends of the Arts at the Art Center. Uh, we feel like a lot of business, uh, businesses would love that opportunity to be a part of a performing troupe. Here's what we want to do through the arts. We want to build confidence, poise and presence, develop their pu public speaking ability, Motivation, self-awareness, expression, responsibility, teamwork, personal development, work ethic. I think all of that goes hand in hand with what we have to offer through our arts program as it grows. The athletic program, athletic skills enhancement. That is going to incorporate taking our young, I don't know how, at what grade we will start. Um, probably the second or third grade. But we will start working on movement, balance, strength, quickness, speed. At the same time, we want to teach them healthy eating habits, healthy lifestyle habits, and just a healthy lifestyle in general. And, and again, nutrition being a big, big part of that because we know how much our kids are exposed to sugar and to dyes and to things that are really not good for developing bodies. So we're going to start that this spring, hopefully first of March, if not sooner. We're going to be in a baseball softball, t-ball season this year, we hope, with a training camp. Our goal is with athletics before every season, we're going to bring all the kids together 
bring all the coaches together, and they're going to work together for maybe as long as two weeks. So we get a lot more reps. We got a lot more fundamental instruction. We're going to bring in put people like Coach Pete here. Raise your hand, Pete. UAB baseball coach, coach with Astros for 10 years, lives here in Orange Beach. He can come in and help our coaches become better coaches, help our coaches coach the kids through the camp and the fundamentals. Then we break up into our individual teams and start practicing in teams for two weeks or so moving into the season. We want to host specialty camps of every type. We got a beach. There's no coach in the country that doesn't want to come to the beach. I think we have all types of business owners, condo owners that would love to put these folks up and host them if they would do a camp for our kids. We're going to pursue that aggressively. We're going to work hard to coach our coaches with coach like Pete. We have other expertise, uh, degrees of expertise in this city that most folks don't even know we have. Professional athletes, scholars, engineers, uh, performers, musicians that are just second to none. And um, we're hoping that we can get them to come in and help from the outside with lessons, uh, motivational visits, whatever it might take. We want to utilize professional, no, just one thing. Coordinate the Orange Beach Sports Association with the City Recreation Department. I had a long talk with the Sports Association and they've been very supportive. What I'm hoping is that the Sports Association can continue their fundraising and help us as a joint venture in buying uniforms and other things of that nature. We want the Sports Association to be responsible for any elite teams, which would be travel teams over and above our rec uh, league. We want our sports association to put peer pressure on their peers to get coaches out to coach because right now we need 18 to 20 softball baseball coaches and we have two signed up. Makes it very, very difficult for us to plan ahead if we don't get more parents involved. Plenty of kids just don't have enough parents. We were one coach short this year at basketball. We had too many kids on each team. Not fair to the kids, not fair to the coach. And uh, we, we got to work in the community Parents, I need the parents, the sports association need the parents to step up and help us coach. We can coach you and teach you how to coach. You don't have to be an expert. You don't have to ever play ball. You can just learn the fundamentals, especially with the younger kids, and teach the fundamentals. That's all you got to do. We have an etiquette class that we're going to run all the kids through. It's going to be a gentleman's class, and it's going to be a Southern Bells class. What we've realized, we've changed our program at the REC this last two years. We've become much more structured, much more discipline oriented, uh, much more focused on behavior, and essentially eliminated our discipline problems. Prior to beginning to do that, and we let them just come in and have a good time, um, it, it, was, it, was, it was constantly something. Kids need structure, they need instruction, and they need, they need somebody hovering over. Now, we hover, but we also back off and try to give our kids time to enjoy time with each other without feeling like that we're watching every word they say. But they also know that there's video on every square foot of the rec center, and they think the thing is bugged. So they think we are hear every word they say. So it works, and I'm like, oh, hey, there's kids in here. I can't tell anybody. <laughs> but this is going to be a great class. Um, and I can, I'm not going to go through everything, but you can see the, the slant of what we're trying to accomplish. Implementation. Beginning the first week in March, hopefully academic tutoring, theater and music, athletic skills enhancement, etiquette and manners class, and I meant to introduce someone. Ms. Clear, will you stand up? You're supposed to be up here. I'm sorry. You snuck it. Ms. Clear is agreed to be our academics coordinator and what we're hoping is the academics coordinator we've had so many teachers call me from the elementary school they're excited some want to tutor and some just can't but what they want to do is tie in with what we're doing we don't want to step into the classroom that's not what our goals are we don't want to step into the school in any way that's their domain that's what they do but what we do want to do through Ms. Clear is coordinate what we do after school to enhance their experience and the kids' experience in the class and to help those that are lagging to catch up and those that are being not being challenged to be challenged with math club and chess club and robotics club and things of that nature. So we are hopefully uh, an enhancement to what they already do. And as we, we talked about earlier, we're an A-plus school. Yes. So now we want to be A-plus, plus, 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 right? So I think Ms. Clear is going to help us make that connection. And uh, 
we really I've been so blessed to talk with these teachers and they really want to help guide us after school in what they need us to do and that's what we want to do we already have theater going we have ballet going we're going to start um, possibly we're not just sure how we're going to do this but guitar and uh, piano lessons and voice lessons I'd like to start a little choir with the kids that like to sing um, you know my son he's gonna play a sport he's gonna play a musical instrument he's gonna take voice and cut the grass so <laughs> the point being is I want him doing a little bit of everything so I'm hoping that we offer that to everybody's child that they can be exposed and participate in as many different and as, and as great a varied uh, activity that maybe they wouldn't get otherwise. Um, the Athletic Skills Enhancement Program is going to start hopefully right away. Uh, etiquette and Manners class is starting right away. This is our starting point for spring. Summer, we're looking at a lot of different types of camps. We may go ahead if things are going well and there's good, there's a lot of interest and participation, then we may go ahead and carry it over through the summer and working with Sunshine and Camp Sunshine in some way. We don't know yet how that's going to work. But by next fall, we hope to have expanded it to more classes and more opportunities and greater numbers is expanded down. Well, my goal for next fall, or our goal is would be second and third graders, one, somewhere in the area, through the eighth grade. We want to bring the seventh and eighth graders in as well and involve them in every aspect of uh, what we do. Okay. Guys, you have to speak up because I told y'all if I leave some out. Well, this is a discussion now, so yeah. jump in there. Okay. Yeah. This is sort of the, the, the flow, chart, flow chart. Councils and citizens at the top. Council will be responsible for the budget and new facility. Citizens are participation and expertise. Then it flows to me. I will oversee uh, all, all the program our program director will be Jonathan Langston, and he will be working with our rec sports director, Laura Davis, and Camp Sunshine, Sunshine Smith. Below that will be our, ac our co coordinators, academics, arts, and athletics, Kelly Clear, uh, Don Roberts, we'll raise your hand, Don. Okay. Don will be our uh, art lia um, arts liaison and coach and a little bit of everything. Caleb Pittman, where's Caleb? He's actually still at the rec center okay. right now. Uh, Caleb is gonna be our music teacher, and voice coach, he was from the University of Mobile and participated in all levels of their musical groups, uh, band experience, so he's got a wealth of experience. He's actually one of our employees. And I think his wife is an assistant, associate pastor, is that right? He's a youth minister. Youth minister at the Methodist Church. So it was great to have him on board and a wealth of expertise when it comes to the musical instrument side and voice side. <coughs> on the athletics coordinator side, I'm gonna take that role only in, the, in that uh, I've got to coordinate City Rec with the Orange Beach Sports and parents, and I feel like that needs to be me uh, because the rec employees need to be taking direction from me, not from any other entity. So I'll sort of be the, I don't use the word buffer, but I'll be the person that connects the dots between the two. That's it. That's it. So, panel, did I miss anything that I asked y'all to remind me to say? No, sir. Okay. Questions? Now, this is not a question, but you have a tremendous opportunity here for the older children to be mentors to the younger children. And it doesn't have to be a great big age range, just somebody older and bigger than they are to pay a little attention to them. That's so important to small children. Jonathan has already started working on that <laughs> with our young adults that like to play basketball. So we allow them to play basketball with younger kids as long as they understand what the rules are and the behavior is, and they understand that they are young men and women that should be showing the younger kids what that's about. Language, uh, sportsmanship, we coach them and how to coach the kids. And we have a good little group that works with us right now, works with our younger kids. And we would love to expand it. And we're doing that already, but we have grand plans to continue basically mentoring mentors at every stage through there from uh, late elementary up to middle and high school. And like as uh, Tony and Mayor Kenny mentioned, we're already doing that in some ways, but the idea is that every one of these facets here do have others that say Don has some people that have really shown great skill in theater. He will be bringing those older ones back to work with the younger ones. And we'll be doing that in every aspect of what we're doing. 
Is that 100%. like with other sports too, like volleyball? Because we Absolutely. have that new volleyball court there. Um, built soccer. up for sports club, <laughs> soccer. Um, Every is aspect. That, is that a nice pit of a little bit big there? <laughs> um, <laughs> at, are we going to uh, try and incorporate track and cross country? All of those things. If we could get to those specifics, and we can get to those now if you would like. But yes, ma'am. We're going to do everything that you can think of as far as the uh, the team sports and the individual sports. As we also look to cast vision for the facility, we're also thinking of things like uh, golf, tennis, swimming, track and field, archery, all those other sports too. Not every child is going to excel at soccer, football, basketball, baseball, yeah. those. So all of those things our overarching goal is that our sports enhancement will work to every one of those. In addition to that, we will have specialized coaches for every one of those sports. The reason I made the remark about soccer is I made the mistake uh, going up in Mobile and playing football, baseball, basketball. That was what we did. Soccer was a communist sport. So I made the mistake of calling it a communist sport at the uh, Town kind of hall meeting, and, and uh, now that there's such a big following, it was supposed to be a joke, it didn't go over very well. So <laughs> but soccer is, and I'm, a, I'm a physical therapist, and my entire back, professional background is in sports medicine and strength training. Um, but at, uh, sport, uh, soccer is probably one of the best, if not the best, sport to develop athletic skills for our kids. A good soccer player. Who's agile, generally fast, or can develop fast, got good hand eye coordination, balance, and then they can transfer that to any sport. So we're big believers in soccer. But let's not kid ourselves. There is nothing we cannot do. But if we don't have parental involvement, we're going to be limited. It's not going to be a program where the city does it for everybody. It's not that going to work that way. It has got to be your child your help and you being involved and we don't ask that you work year round but if you'll just pick a sport and involve yourself with one sport and if every parent will do that or fundraisers or whatever this will go a lot further but our core mission today is through our athletic enhancement program is to build athletes we can build athletes you start at a young age the neuromuscular system is developing that's we develop speed quickness agility balance and all the things that make them good athletes you wait to seventh and eighth grade, you get a lot less return. You start in second grade, by the time they get to the seventh and eighth grade, they're a different ball player from when they were. But that also goes for voice. My little girl couldn't sing a lick at eight years of age. So we stuck her in voice lessons, and she sings pretty good today. So the point is, you start kids young enough, and you start them down a path, they may not like it, and that's fine. But then they may find a passion very early, which is a good thing. And that's what we're hoping. We can expose kids, find their passions, find what they like, uh, and, and let them take off down that path and us help them do better at it. But please understand, we can't do this if parents aren't going to be active and part of it. Yes, ma'am. Um, I want to applaud the efforts of all these programs and certainly am excited to hear the inclusion of seventh and eighth graders. I feel like that there are a lot of opportunities in this community for younger ages and I think that's great. I feel like that seventh and eighth grade sometimes gets missed and it's not here. So I think that's critical. Um, most of those kids are at Gulf Shores Middle School and potentially if we're on the timeline with schools opening as we've been talking about, they'll be our first ninth grade class or tenth grade class. So I think it's very important that they are included in this. And I want to really encourage our school board to look at ways that we can transport those seventh and eighth graders back to Orange Beach where they will be going to school and to high school so they can get the same benefit of the younger children as they'll be that first class in ninth and eighth grade. So thank you for all your doing but that is my um, challenge. I hope we can figure that out because I think that's very critical to those seventh and eighth graders. You think at that age 13, 14, eighth not only a critical age, but they're the ones that don't have all those opportunities and they're the ones that you either go a good way or you go a real bad way at that age and we want to utilize this and what the city's offering to make sure that we're guiding them in the right direction we need a little help with that with maybe transportation and some other things and 
obviously parent participation, and I'm willing to help in any way I can. Uh, Michelle, we'll figure it out. Okay. I okay. promise you. Give you my word. Thank you, but I think okay. this is great, and I'm glad that all grades will be included. The South acres need to be there right now, today. They we know what a privilege it is. Put them to work and let them do the volunteers, <laughs> cut grass, whatever. Well, that's the idea, is that no one ever <laughs> ages out. And even as they move on out of high school into college, they come back and help mentor. And we have, uh, we have programs that they come back for in the summer. Yes, ma'am. Is this like a, so is this solely, we're talking after school program? Is that, <laughs> so after school till? The way we, we envision it and where we're going to start it is kids will walk over and uh, from the time they get there, 3.05 or whatever, they'll have free time, snack time, hang out, whatever, till 3.30. Then at 3.30 our first block will start. So again, that block could be anything. It could be any one of the three or all three of the different facets, arts, academics, or academic, going. So they may go to an hour of tutoring. From 3.30 to 4.30. At 4.30 they may go to a music lesson or go to theater class. And I'm using this just as illustration because I have no idea how it's going to work out as far as the scheduling yet. And they can go as late as 6.30. So hopefully a parent now doesn't have to come from work, pick their child up somewhere, then take them somewhere for a class or for a lesson, then go back and pick them up, pick them up or stay there. This way they come straight over from school. You don't have to come back to 5.30 or 6.30. And hopefully by then they've done everything that you would want them to do. If they have a block or two blocks that they have nothing going on that they're doing, then we will have them all in the gym doing some type of structured activity, kickball, dodgeball, basketball, whatever it might be. But they will be, they will be busy. Um, if they want to take time to go back in the classroom and work on homework or work on something that a tutor work with them with, they can do that. There may be a very short period of video game time uh, just to give them that opportunity to take a break from all that they're doing. I'm hoping that they find this more fun than video games. Mm -hmm. But um, I'm a realist, and I know that there needs to be a little bit of that. I won't use it as a reward, but a little bit of time that they need to enjoy something that they want to do. So we've got one room set up for Minecraft and some of those things. Now we're not going to play. We're not playing any of those. Uh, you know, bang bang, cut your head off, bloody gory kind of thing. There's nothing like that. It's, hopefully something that challenges them in another way. But that is sort of the big picture of how it's going to work. But it will be 3.30 to 6.30, Monday through Thursday for sure. Friday may be an abbreviated, but we've also thought about letting Friday nights be parents' night out. And we just extend Friday night from 5.30 or 6.30 to 8.30 or 9 or whatever. And the kids can just stay there and play for three hours or so while the parents do what they want to do on Friday nights, pick them up at 9. We already got folks there. It's not that big a deal to keep them another few hours. That's sort of the big picture. Now, we know there's flies in that, and we know that things are going to have to be... Well, once we get started, we're going to realize that, that, that that's not going to work. So we are tremendously, and I mean honestly, open to something you see that we can do better. Because, um, again, we pride ourselves being the number ones at the table and surrounding ourselves with smart people. So, y'all help us. Excuse me. One of the things I did want to add to your question, uh, I'm hoping, and, and we're still in the discussing stages as to how all this is going to play all out, but I'm more than happy to develop classes for older kids that, that are not local right now to come in and maybe take them early evening the same as they would if they were rehearsing for a show, because eventually we'd like to have a full-blown civic theater for the community of that both uh, young children, middle-aged kids, high school-aged kids, and some of you <laughs> to come and be in programs and do productions from here and not from some other location. So that's the kind of longer-term plan for the theater, that we have classes that everybody can come and be a part of. And, well, and again, I went back and I talked about it being a one-shot stop. I won't, we want everybody on one campus. But to do that and expand it to the number of kids we foresee in the future, we're going to have to spend some money. And the good thing, the council is on board. We have a retreat. We talked about it. And this is still up for review. But what we're envisioning is on one side of the rec center, we will build a large add-on that will be classrooms and Camp Sunshine. She'll move over here next to the rec center. 
and we'll build a play yard out in front along Wilson Avenue. On the other side, we're going to add on another gymnasium, but with a multi-purpose floor, and incorporate in that building another building that will be our turf room for indoor athletic training or anything we want it to be. So we're going to have to add a lot to this rec center to make it be what we envision five years down the road, but it's the best money we can spend, and I think the council's on board with it. I mean, I think it's going to cost us $5 million to do it all and do it right, but you know, we got $5 million. So sitting in the bank at less than 1%, right? At least Matt can do better. So, that's four. Oh, four. <laughs> four did do that. But anyway, we, we do want to add on. Um, I haven't called Mr. Collar, but I figure it's better to pop this in front of everybody and not put you on the spot. <laughs> but what we'd like to do is possibly look at uh, partnering with the county and building a really large uh, theater auditorium at the high school uh, for performances, for whatever it might be, and uh, do that in some kind of partnership. With the school. I just I was gonna tell you afterwards, Mayor, but uh Dr. <laughs> Frank Boatwright, our director of facilities and maintenance construction, he's gonna meet with me next Friday because we right now Jackie Barber here, the architect has a floor plan and everything ready to be looked at for the middle school, high school. So we're gonna look at that next Friday and then thought and then whatever thoughts or changes we needed to come up with. Uh, we would see if we could get up with you and whoever you want to get up with, we'd sit down and let y'all take a look at it. Uh, you've got the, uh, you know, the, the design, uh, you know, uh, everything done uh, for y'all to look at, and I think he's included a performing arts center on it. Uh, we're just not sure of the cost right now, and there, there, and there could be some partnership. Uh, we were talking about dollars, so we just don't know yet. But uh, our, our trick is to get that to the State Building Commission as quick as possible because they're they're notorious for their good people, I'm sure. I hope there's nobody in here from the state building. <laughs> and they do have tents and drag their feet. And uh, so the timing is everything in this project. Okay. Um, well, let's discuss that because we would like to have a really nice performing arts center uh, for the community, for all ages. I mean, there's nothing that would thrill me more than have people from all over Baldwin County coming to watch our senior play or something of that nature. Something that, you know, uh, I want our scholars to be as well known as our quarterback. Uh, it's, it's something I left out is a big part of this is we want our kids to get scholarship dollars. And then on the academic side, there are so many dollars out there to be had that are so easy to get if they just have the discipline and work ethic to go there and the, the help to get them looked for and secure. So we're going to work hard to work with the school and the guidance counselors to help that happen, uh, but at least to prepare them. I was surprised by how many kids were taking the ACT and didn't take any prep courses. ACT training would be awesome. Yes. yes. We had an instructor in there for... Absolutely. And, and, you know, my, my daughter took the took class four times and every time she took it, she did better than the test. So just the best money we ever spent. So she got scholarship money. So anyway, uh, we want ex excellence in every area. I mean, like I said sports is my background, but I'm, I've, I've come to realize that not every kid is an athlete or wants to be an athlete. And those kids deserve just as much of an opportunity as any other kid. And all of our kids deserve the opportunity to be academic scholars. There's no reason that they can't. And when I say excellence, please too, I don't want to confuse it. Excellent doesn't mean, doesn't mean you have to be an A-plus student or you have to be an elite ball player. What we want excellence to mean is that we want each child to reach their maximum potential for gifts and talents that they were given. And who knows what that might be. But we're not defined as great by whether you start a quarterback or whether you've got a 36 on the ACT, in my opinion. There's so many other kids that can shine in so many other ways. We just gotta be there to help them. I want no kids, we want no kids to fall through the cracks. Every child in this city deserves an opportunity. So we're going to structure, people have been asking about cost, I don't know yet. I'm of the mind that I actually would like to pay for it all, so every child would have an opportunity to do everything at no cost, but also know that when something is free, it's not valued very well. So we're going to work on what part of the program is free for exposure, what part of the programs will be a subsidization by the city and some co-pay by the parent, and then what level would be strictly the parent and the child 
developing a very specific timeout that really is uh, special to that one and how that will work, but provide the opportunity to have a musician or someone train them here. Because again, we're at the end of the road. I mean, it's hard to find voice coaches and it's hard to find trumpet coach and things of that nature, but I think we can find those types of things. So we probably will have a base pay per month for the kids to be part of the program, but I think it'll be novel and very fair. Uh, and then we'll just have to go from there. Yes, ma'am. Well, So, also, but my question is, as of March 1st, how do you, do you, the 10-year-olds continue to go to the rec center as they are? There's no additional enrollment or how, like, how does that? Yeah, this spring, I think we're going to keep going just like we're going and try to institute the programs and take it one step at a time. we we'll start actually use the ones that are going now sort of as guinea pigs as to how the block system will work and how we'll coordinate it and how we'll move them around. Eventually, what we would hope to do is move into something like Sunshine's program where they'll check in and you'll have to check them out. It won't be free flow. Well, right now, when they come in, they know they cannot leave the building. They do not come in and go out and roam the streets. And once they step in, they're there. Once they leave, they don't come back. But we will probably move toward a more structured program, especially when Camp Sunshine comes over, as to how we do that, how we get them over from the elementary school. Uh, this is something I just want to talk to you guys about. We might look at covering the walkway all the way to the elementary school for inclement weather, cold weather, something of that nature so that our kids can always get over. We generally take staff over and escort them over, but we don't want to take responsibility from the school door to our door because what happens is when we go over there, if we have a checklist, we don't know who was out sick, we don't know who ended up going, coming out early. We can't, there's no way to do that. So it's gonna be up to the parents to realize they, we're going to have folks escort them over, but it's the kid and the parents' responsibility for them to line up and be there and get over there. Now, once they get in our building, we take responsibility for it, and we will work all that out, check in, check out. I know, is, is that answer your question? Or is that far yeah, too so much? Yeah, basically, as a parent, there's nothing additional that we need to do before March 1st. I don't We're think so. Y'all know anything? Not yet, I don't think. Um, but if there is, we will communicate that. I just wanted to add that this is... A blessing and a privilege for us to be able to offer our children this program. A lot of times we lose fact, we lose sight of the fact that we have amenities for adults everywhere you turn, and this amenity is for our families. Um, so even homeschool school children are invited. This is not just for children at Orange Beach Elementary School. If you are homeschooled, you are welcome to participate in our program. I am beyond excited at the amount of talent that we have sitting here and that we have out there. Um, I spend a lot of time, sadly, at the rec center, and so I see your children all the time, and they are, for the most part, very well behaved <coughs> and very polite, and to be given the opportunity to build on that is truly a blessing for us. So please talk to us. Please be part of this. Please don't just let us see your children. Let us see you. Um, please offer to coach or to mentor. Um, Jonathan has kindly asked me to handle a class in his Southern Belt uh, course. We all know I am not a Southern Belt, but I'm working on my accent. <laughs> It's really slow. It's coming slow. It's <laughs> so please, please tell everyone you know about it. Please encourage. Um, this is not babysitting. We are not babysitting the children. We are not doing that now. We are helping you build the character of your children. And we need to know what we're doing right and what we can do better and what your needs are. So please communicate to us. And the next time we have a meeting. I hope we have to move to the event center because we have so many parents and families. Thank you. We have our own school coming. I mean, I, maybe I'm the only one excited, but I'm just telling you, in my involvement in sports throughout the state of Alabama, the Panhandle of Florida, a school in our community changes everything. And um, the participation, I believe, will go through the roof once that school is built. I believe it's going to happen. It's so difficult 
to make that connection when you've got to go to another city. But I truly believe that with this program in place, by the time we get there, parents, grandparents, snowbirds will be involved in a very big way. And um, again, I, I want, we want a school that everybody in the state of Alabama comes to see what are they doing to be the best at everything. I mean, how do they have that much scholarship money for their seniors? How does, that's what I want for all of us. That's what we want for all of us, uh, to be the best. And uh, so anyway, I'm, I'm preaching now. Ms. Minnick? I don't know the answer yet. What about um, the children that are still in camp, sometimes they ate nine, <coughs> which would benefit from the Southern Bell or the etiquette class. Um, do, is that open to them, or do you have to wait to the 10? That's a good question. If we had parents, enough parents that wanted their kids to participate in that, we would work with Sunshine on a way to make that happen. Well, part um, of that, too, is the age. Some right. of the things that we're going to be dwelling on are that comes in that precarious age starting of 10 to 13 between you know of how to treat a lady this is also a time where they're beginning courtship and some other stuff too so to start we would like to keep it for about the ages of 10 to 13 but again remember that as we start in february with that as well as mark with the other things this is really for lack of better terms our litmus test of this program of the grand program that we will be rolling out in the fall so for right now, we're keeping the ages of the etiquette class to the ones that are already coming to the rec center, right. even though you don't have to just come to the rec center to be there. You can bring your child there that's approaching 10 years old. But the content is going to be geared for children ages 10 to 13. And forgive me, they keep me in check, but I just want to say yes. And, you know, yes. So, well, in, in general, that's our answer to everything. Is yeah. yes. If there's a desire for it, we're going to figure out how to do that. So it might right be a now. it might be a modified program for seven and, and eight year olds. Absolutely, well, like that is where we will work to. Culinary. <coughs> yes, ma'am. Yeah, they might bring kids cook at home, so they love that. They're eight, nine. Right. Yeah. Well, the culinary hasn't been for ages. We've started culinary, I believe. Uh, for a uh, second grade all the way up. So our first year we had 35 people in our culinary class and went on a wait with it and filled up and on a wait within the first year, our first week. The second year we had 75 in the class and went on a wait during the first week. Yes, sir. How soon can we purchase a wrestling match? Very soon. That, that is definitely one of the things on a, on our agenda, and we, I've had two calls in the last few days. One of them I haven't been able to return for this reason, but to know that already there's two resources within our community that we can go to that. That was my thing in high school, and that was our one of the first things I would mentioned to Mayor Kennett. We've got to have that. So that is on the agenda, my friend. Mm -hmm. okay. One of the questions that I've been asked a couple of times and I, I didn't know the answer to was the concern that right now Camp Sunshine has a wait list for those kids. And this program isn't really addressing that wait. And we have working parents who are saying, you know, we have a wait at Camp Sunshine. And I hear you say that, you know, in a five-year plan, Camp Sunshine's going to be moved and there's going to be space. Is there anything in your thought process to help those parents with younger children that need that after-school care in this interim? Yeah, and we've been talking, the problem is the facility itself limits the number of younger children. Am I, right? Am I correct, Sunshine? So we don't want to add on over there and spend a half a million dollars when we're going to move them over here. So there is a lag time, but, but by the same token, moving the third and fourth graders over, and I got very confused because your program is very complicated, so correct me if I'm wrong. But by moving the third and fourth graders over, it may open up more room for second. The K through. Yes. Okay. So that's, we're, we're going to work through how can we make that work and bring the third and fourth over and see if we can open up that waiting list. But our goal is if we build this building, there won't be a waiting list. And, and, and that's wonderful in long term. And we're just trying to help answer the question for parents who are sitting on a waiting list. We do understand, and we're trying our best to figure out how to deal with it. Right. But that campus, to do everything we want to do, the rec campus is sort of a hodgepodge where everything's laid out. So you hate to spend money until you have a master plan and you know exactly what you want to do. So we're trying our best to think through and be smart in how we lay this out. The tennis courts probably need to be moved all the way to the back. Uh, that we need a new pool 
how we're going to do that. We've got to figure that out. Camp Sunshine is going to go away, so that will give us more parking. Uh, so there's a lot of things that we're juggling and moving parts, but we know we need to get it done. And it is at the forefront of our capital expenditure and capital project list. Um, and I think we're just short of finding a design architect or engineering engineering slash architecture firm that could come in, help us design all this and lay it out. But it's also, you've got one building that's educational oriented and I don't want to say daycare oriented, educational oriented, and you got another one, a turf room. So it's totally different uses and totally different expertise that we got to search out and help us design because I don't want, I want to bring in the experts to make sure we do it right the first time. But tutoring hopefully is going to start as soon as Miss Clear says we can start. So you tell us what well, you're I was just going to say, I just went, was going to talk to whoever I needed to talk to as far as getting, you know, who, I don't have a list of who's the tutors. At this point, I have a list of you all signed up. I want to just kind of talk to Tom thing. I didn't know if that was you, Jonathan. Yeah, we can start those conversations next week. Ms. Okay. Kelly. We have a lot of teachers call and express interest. And I think that they said, that, I don't know how many teachers are here, but they said they were going to come or they want to hear the presentation and decide how they want to participate. But we have teachers that are not Orange Beach teachers, but that live in Orange Beach that want to tutor as well. So they're welcome. Because so. I, I, I kind of envision a, you know, just a catch-up kind of, you know, like a tutoring program where those that are behind kind of catch up. But it's, I would like to have, too, just a lab type situation where kids that go home and don't know how to do their homework, they're over there, could come in and just drop in as needed. You know, I mean, so that they may just have trouble in one certain area with a homework problem or whatever, so if we could set up something like that. Absolutely. You the boss. Mm -hmm. <laughs> whatever you tell us to do, we're going to do. <laughs> Anybody have any other questions? Jerry, would you like to comment? Yeah. Um, Sometimes if you wonder, well, you know, this really sounds great. We are taping and hitting the key areas. We took a group of leaders from uh, the Gulf Coast to Montgomery for the last two days. And we had great meetings. This morning we met with the Business Council of Alabama, which is kind of the group that facilitates and advocates business practices and what business needs throughout the entire state. And this could be a two employee company all the way up to a 5,000 employee company. So the one thing that they're advocating for 2018 that they're going to put in place in the community colleges is how to treat women correctly, how to dress when you come into a, inter, to an interview or how do you dress when you're doing business. How do you sit down and have dinner with a important business client. It's kind of amazing, isn't it, Jonathan? Uh, but they're going to be teaching it at, at college age. How much further will we be along when our kids start at 10, 12, or 13? And you teach them these skills, how much further along will they be and grab those opportunities? Because companies are only looking, they're looking for the technical skills, but that's not the top of the list. The top of the list is how the soft skills we talk about. How you communicate, how you respect somebody's space, how do you dress, and how do you recognize how to dress and to the appropriate way. And then how do you handle yourself in important type situations, whether it be a, a discussion, a lunch, or a dinner, and how you respect your family, your spouse, or your, or your friend. And all of those things come out in all the way down to how you post on Facebook. All those things are, are, are you, you can go in and you can have the best technical skills out there. You could go in and get a rocket. But if you do any of those other things bad, you're not going to make the list. And that's what business is saying today. So I, I just want to, want to emphasize how important and that we're right on target, but it's much better to teach at 10, 11, or 12 than at 18, 19, or 20. So uh, I'm very excited about that component of it. The other part, Eddie, I was thinking about, and this is something to ponder, we're not even discussion, but when we're looking at a middle school and a high school, 
you're going to have a per square foot for those schools what Baldwin County can provide. So if Orange Beach steps in and says, listen, we want a little bit different, better architecture on the front. Those schools are going to be the first thing that people come in when they come over the bridge and drive down canal. Then whatever the difference in the square footage is where the, you know, we'll take yours and whatever the difference in boosting it up, the city would pay the difference in that square footage. We've we had those conversations where yeah. I'm all for partnering with anybody. And, and the same thing with the Performing Arts Center. You may say, all right, this is what we're, we can put in. And the city may say, hey, let's increase that by 150 seats. Let's just do a little bit different with the sound and all that. So that bumps the square footage up. The city will pay the difference from what you're going to put in there and what the city would want. The, 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 the idea is that when you partner, when you partner together, you leverage the resources to where we will have excellence. And that's why Orange Beach is going to be different. Because you have a city that's totally plugged in to make the education the best it can be down here. And so with, with Baldwin County Board of Education uh, being a partner and a city partner with them, we can achieve things that I don't think you'll see in a lot of other areas. And it's not a comp it's not a competition. We're not competing. We just want the best for Orange Beach kids at all ages. And and we can accomplish that and we will accomplish that. So I I, I you know, I look forward to as we move forward in the process because uh, I know this is all doable. Well thank you. One thing, Mayor, if I could to Jerry Coyne, you called me and you discussed this with me, and and I was very, I, I was very impressed and appreciative that you reached out because of an after school program. But you listened to me about my thoughts about partnering with the county and just like with Kelly, kind of heading up your academics. I kind of mentioned to you and I think you and uh, uh, Dr. Woodburn spoke a little bit yeah. that it's kind of like bringing in the youth sports and they teach you how to do something and all of a sudden they get to the high school or middle school and they're teaching it totally different. You know, of course, Kelly knows Dr. Woodburn. She knows our goals as a, as a school and our, our, uh, our standards academically now. But you've asked me and Dr. Woodburn would love to partner and just be the, the, there for Kelly. And uh, I mean, she's in Washington right now. She would be here, but she doesn't know Kelly's going to do this. But, you know, I just like the partnership because getting your academics and all those arts and stuff lined up to where they move in the middle of the high school, they're, the transition's easy and parents aren't going, wait a minute now, we learned this at the city rec from the city and you're teaching it different at the school. That's where you kind of start getting sideways with each other. So I appreciate that. We, we know that we need to submit. We are submissive to the teachers and what happens eight to three. And everything we do outside eight to three is nothing but to make that better that's what we're here for not to subvert it not to try to dominate it or take it over and, and i understand that i have i have a hard time not driving a train and i understand <laughs> that but i promise you we're not going to get into school but um you know it's funny talking about kids i do a little every now and then a commencement graduation speech and i give think of the, the title of this is you're not really that special and i have these points that i give to guys and the girls and one of the points the first one i give the guys is Gentlemen, buy an iron and iron board. You and I believe the number of kids that come in at 18, 19 years of age and not have a fresh shirt and pants on or a tie. And it just, you know, I, I, don't, I can't tell you how I feel when I see them walk in the door, but it's like, how did we get to this point that our kids don't know to wear a fresh shirt and pants to a job interview or anything? So anyway, that's, we want to start that at a very early age, so that's not even an issue. You know, our kids are so much, so well prepared. Something else, we are trying to build camaraderie, we gotta build tradition, we gotta build a killer instinct, because I wanna dominate. But the point I'm making is, we gotta decide on a mascot. And I've come up, we've come up with several ideas, and we want y'all to, the first one is the, do we have, do we, we get slides again? Do we? Okay, the first one is the Orange Beach Tourist. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, the Orange Beach condos. We'll throw one more. But I do think that the Orange Beach Snowbirds, well, the thing about the Orange Beach Snowbirds is you take the Orange Beach tourist mascot and just put a couple of sugar packs in their hand. So. Well, I tell them all the time, they love it. They know it's true. They, they can't run from it anymore. 
so <laughs> they take it all a good fun. But I do want us to start. We've got what four years or so before we have our first. And I forgot, Miss Hart is here. I didn't recognize you. Thank you for coming. Appreciate it. Yes. Um, four years, I guess, five years for our first senior class. I mean, I really want that to be a special time. And now's the time for us to start creating that tradition and that desire for our young kids to want to be an Orange Beach something. Whether that's a Marlin, an Orange Beach Mako, I don't know what that is, but I do think we need to establish our brand and start right now with it. Sounds like a little thing, but for kids, it is a huge thing. And uh, I just know as a kid, I grew up in Mobile, I played at Viger High School, and as an elementary school kid, my dream was to step on the field at Lab Stadium and play for Viger High School. And that's all, I was at every Viger High School ball game, every event they had, uh, the whole community was there. That's what we need to create here. And you start, in my mind, you got to brand it and you got to make them have something they like to wear and put on. It sounds simple, but for kids, it's a big deal. I think y'all know that. So, why, why would you change from the Marlins? Because, I mean, every other elementary, middle school, and everything. I don't know that we would, but, but I'm just saying, I'm, I don't care. I'm just saying we need to decide what it wants to be. That may be what everybody wants to be, may not be. But, it's a, it's, it's a discussion point, but if we want to be the Marlins, that solves a whole problem. It makes it real simple. We'll just make an exec, exec, executive decision tonight. Y'all want to stay there? We'll just sign it. Y'all like that? Right. So the condo's there. <laughs> okay, we are the Orange Beach Marlins, and we're going to start incorporating that into all of our... We want our kids in the after-school program to have t-shirts that they put on that talks about what they do, whether it be strength and conditioning program and they've reached a 100-pound club or performing arts or some neat little shirt that they would wear with a nice thing. We want them to have that and take pride in what they do. And we want to start that right away. So, any last questions, comments, Superintendent Tom? I'm, I'm impressed. I'll tell you what, this is for a community to come together uh, and, and share a goal, and that's to for their, their children. I mean, you're going to have a middle school, high school, you're going to have an elementary middle school, high school, and uh, it's kind of like the Alberta feeder pattern. I think they're going to grow faster than any feeder pattern we've had, but their school as it comes along and we're breaking ground on their addition. Uh, I don't know where you're going to put everybody. That's my favorite because people like to come to a place that provides everything for their children. Uh, I do quality, believe our numbers. Quality education. I do believe our numbers are going to grow quickly as people see what we have to offer their kids. They're going to be here. Miss mm -hmm. Norman, you got anything you'd like to add? When they come, there's a realtor down there. <laughs> 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 I'm put in a plug where you can. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not trading lightly on that one. Miss <laughs> <laughs> Hope, anything I'm, like I'm trying to figure out how to get my daughter to live here so my grandchildren can. <laughs> um, I'm very excited for you too. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody from the Sports Association want to add anything? No, we're, we're here to help. You know, we are uh, excited about the program, uh, all the sports. You know, you guys have specific sports questions. As we continue the program, you know, our number one goal as soon as we get to Tony is to get the strength and agility program going. Um, after that, we you know, will be partnering with different family, you know, different, we'll call them um, figureheads that want to lead specific sports. So it's, you know, it's too much for us to sit there and, tell everybody how to do everything. We're going to act as an umbrella organization trying to keep everybody working together uh, and to get the kids as much exposure as possible. Wrestling, golf, tennis, um, just give us a Volleyball. Time. Volleyball. <laughs> yeah, volleyball is killing our basketball, so we're going to all work together better. <laughs> no one will be denied Soccer. If, if there's the participation level. No one. No sport. But I said the individual sports will have, you know, we got tennis courts right there. We got a tennis pro. There's no reason we can't have a great tennis team and start tennis lessons. But we got a golf course. There's no reason we can't give golf lessons. There's nothing we can't do, but we can't do it all. And we're not going to do it all without participation. Hey, I always volunteer. I yeah. coach soccer. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, we do the shameless plug for the festival. Okay. You want to do it? I'm going to do a shameless plug for Seafood Festival. And the reason being, the Sports Association has been doing Seafood Festival. This will be the 26th year. That has always been what was funding to a large part baseball, softball, and t-ball. City has now taken that over. We're doing that under our rent program. Wait a minute. 
We didn't take it over. It was given to us. <laughs> they gave it, it to us. It wasn't a coup. That was what we They gave it to us. We've been working yeah. toward that goal for many, many years. Um, <clears throat> this is my shameless plug for Seafood Festival. This will be our third year to hold it down Main Street at the wharf. And if you and your children have not been to that event, you need to come out. It'll be 23 days from now. It's on February 24th. One of the things that we have been trying to do over the last several years is to continue to grow that to where kids come to it and want to be a part of it and things are going on. So that's big kids area, and, you know, over and above the fact that you've got the arts and crafts and all like that. This event has huge potential as a fundraiser for whatever we're going to continue to do as a uh, as we grow it to what was the word we were using as a athletic. Um, Boost, booster club for the school or whatever. Um, come out to this event, support it, bring the kids, tell other people about it. I think you're going to be mildly impressed, especially if you have not been in the last few years. Uh, we have uh, cut it off at 95 arts and crafts vendors. We have two stages this year for the very first time. The stage is going to be in what is the kids area, it's like the kids zone, car show area. All of the performers on that stage are young people. Some kids that have grown up in our community, Mara Hawkins is one of them, uh, Austin Thompson, um, and there's a young gentleman, I can't really tell you much about him at the moment, but he's coming here from Atlanta. He, he participated in, on uh, the American Idol and represented Al uh, Atlanta and won, and uh, he's going to be performing at noon on our stage. So come out, be a part of it. This thing has the potential to grow and something that we can use as a booster and use those monies for our kids many, many years into the future. And, shameless plug. Okay. <laughs> but it can only like, grow. If you'd like to volunteer for a three hour shift, let me or Matt know. <laughs> All right. It can only grow relative to the number of volunteers that we have to allow it to grow. The city can't, at this point, there's nothing else we can do. It's up to the parents to participate. To. But it's a huge money. How much did I make, Jesse? 10, 12, 14? Yeah. $15,000 raised last year, one day. Uh, and that, that money has typically been partnered with you know, some dollars from the city to put on the baseball programs and all-stars for baseball specifically. What you'll start seeing, you know, as we get the strength and conditioning program and you know, we make donations to the city to help get that going, you know, we're buying the t-shirts for the strength and agility program. As we start bringing in these coaches to coach coaches and working with, um, you know, the different programs to bring in these people or these camps, those dollars are going to start getting spread out over more sports, right? We're going to figure out how to get more access to soccer, better access to volleyball and tennis. So, you know, in the past, hey, that's baseball money. I don't play baseball. I don't care. These dollars are getting spread across the whole community now. So, let me also help. Well, well, don't forget your kids that are National Honor Society. Uh, you know, that email has been sent. Yeah. They need they need hours. So volunteer. You know, they need him. <laughs> well, thank y'all. But I do want please our superintendent and our school board representative representatives here tonight. When does that ever happen? <laughs> taking a very personal interest in our success and I really appreciate it more than they know. So, Bill? Um, Mayor, I'd just like to know if this presentation is going to be on the city website? It's uh, actually there now on the Recreation Center website. Thank you. Go to the Recreation Center page of the city website and it's on there right now. Thanks. Thank you. Anything else, Andy, that we're doing? Okay. Just follow us on social media. It's, uh, it's all out there on social media. Okay. Yeah. All right, last time, so last Sure. While we're talking about parent involvement, I really need y'all's help. Um, our coaches, the participation from parents with coaching has gotten really difficult. And I get a lot of phone calls about, we want this really cool kitchen machine, or we want this, or we want that. We can get all that stuff, but it doesn't do anything for us if we don't have the parent to use it. Um, I can't keep badgering people to coach. I, I know i got the same five or six people that coach everything, and I appreciate you. But we really need everybody to step up. You know, help when you can, even if it's just for an hour once a week. I can work around your schedule. People tell me all the time, you know, they they work in Fairhope, don't get back there at 6.30 so they can't coach. Yeah, you can. I can make sure all your games are at 6.30 or 7.30. So we'll figure it out. 
but I need your help. And the kids need your help, and it's going to be easier and better for everyone, even if you don't know anything about it. I can find someone to show you and teach you the mechanics of the sport. But if you can just get out there and give your time to the kids for an hour twice a week, it'll make a big difference. Help us a lot, too. An example was this year in basketball. We had enough kids for four teams, but we only had three coaches. So what that meant was we had way too many kids per team. So it was unfair to the kids, unfair to the coaches, and it was an unfair advantage for our competition because when you got six or seven kids playing versus nine and ten, you're doing much more rotation where the other kids play together all the time. It's just not fair. So I don't want to go where we may have to go if the coaches don't step up, and that would be a lottery on what kids get to play as we match the number of kids that we're going to allow to play with the number of coaches we have. But if we don't get more participation, we may have to go there because we can't continue to load these teams up with numbers beyond what it should be. So, okay, anybody else? It's almost an hour. Yes, sir. I know I've talked to a few people that were disappointed that there was a karate this year. And I just wanted to put that out there for you to just have to be included in this. We talked with Chris Wheelis, and he wants to come back. Cool. Chris pulled out because there was not a participation. Yeah, I know. And I, I didn't, we didn't know how to fix that. We gave it every opportunity. To, it's not his fault. They have the best program, my kids. I mean, it's fantastic. I want him back. And now that we have the opportunity to possibly subsidize his coming back, then I think we can start it back. Cool. And we we're going to work to do that. So, what's that? We spoke with him yesterday, yeah. and he is he's a class part. act, and he's a good guy. So it will awesome. be a part of our martial arts. Will be a part of our after school rotation. That's great. Yes. Sir. I said this the other day in the meeting, and I think it bears repeating that um, <clears throat> I'm from Ohio, I'm a Yankee, and I'm learning how to talk like this so I can match everybody else <laughs> to get down right, but I come from a program that has one of the top five children's theater programs in the country, and one of the kids that I get started just won a Grammy Sunday, and he was a Tony nominee for Best Actor in uh, Dear Evan Hansen this year. I'm taking two of our kids from down here up to see him. He's getting us $400 a piece tickets for all of them. The point I'm trying to make is that the person I work for up there that ran that program, still runs the program today, has tried for years to get a program similar to this in the Columbus, Ohio schools, and they didn't want to put the money into it, they didn't want to make the effort, they didn't want to find people to do it. A community like Orange Beach, by doing this, is so far ahead and so far advanced to most cities that would love to have this kind of program. And I think not only are all your parents very fortunate, but these young people that are sitting here, those are the ones who are truly going to benefit by having all of these programs put together and coordinated, and you should be very, very happy about that. So an hour and 15 minutes. I was hoping to have you all out of here in an hour. So thank you all very, very much. I'm going to stay if you've got questions.